Alright, hi, my name is Kevin Matthews. I'm a singer, songwriter, musician, um, and this is uh, Singapore Originals by Tim Miller. Uh, Singapore Original uh, would be an artist who is um, uh, unique in the sense that someone uh, who creates art or music that's uniquely Singaporean in that sense. Right, so someone whose experiences and background and, and uh, abilities right, have really come up from Singapore due to upbringing, education, experiences, and everything, right, to come up with something that's uniquely original in Singapore. So that's, that's how I uh, view a Singapore original. What does it mean to support Singapore original? Purely, it just, to me, it just means giving it a chance. Um, I think for a lot of people in Singapore, uh, they, they have a certain uh, mindset of uh, original music from Singapore that they don't even give it a chance. Like that they kind of write it up, they think immediately they think it's inferior, it's not as good as what they have in overseas. So actually all you, all you really need to start with is to give it a chance. Just listen to it. Give it the five minutes of ten minutes. Because I've been to many gigs where foreign bands are playing and, and you can tell that the audience, the Singapore audience, is, has never heard of music before. But yet they listen to it just purely because it's from overseas. So it's not an excuse of you know some, they want something that's familiar. It's just just that mindset and prejudice against local compared to overseas. I think the reason why Singaporeans have a problem uh, appreciating local music, appreciating Singapore made music, uh, it's got to do with it's actually historical and cultural in nature. Um, I mean, in the early 70s, rock music was banned in Singapore for three or four years. And uh, that basically uh, put in the minds of many, many parents back then that rock music is bad. It's not something that we would want our children to do, right? So, so Singaporeans should concentrate on getting good jobs and making money rather than do something artistic. Because that was considered bad. The government didn't like it, it was shunned the corner. So, so that has brought about this prejudice Right, this lack of appreciation for, for local music because just think that Singaporeans can't do this or it's not good enough, things like that. Uh, so that actually is a more of a, 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 a grassroots change. Right, and I do see it actually changing very slowly because um, you know I teach in polytechnics and stuff like that. So I can see that uh, the kids who are like 70 to 20, they are slowly beginning to appreciate local music and uh, I think that is where it starts you know from a young age in school so I mean nowadays the culture is like parents and I come across a lot of musicians who the first thing I ask a young musician what do your parents think about you doing music and they say oh yeah they're very supportive so that's the first thing is to change the parents themselves gotta see that you know it's fine if my kid is doing music wants to pursue music that's fine but then that starts to you know then you, uh, people don't feel that there's a stigma or something wrong if you're playing music or you're doing music and that's really where it starts and it, it might take another generation of four years or whatever kind of thing but I think it's slowly beginning to start to see you know locals like you know appreciating like uh, like Charlie Lim or, or Sure. And below, so this, you know, young, young musicians are coming up now. Well, I think the main issues that you know Singapore bands face again is this issue about appreciation. Uh, whether um, Singapore audience is able to appreciate uh, original music. Uh, I think we have actually come a, a long way. Considered that if you think about five years or more ago, Singaporeans wouldn't even appreciate a local band playing covers. Right? You even think that Singaporeans could be good musicians to begin with. So that has actually come a long way and of course you know, Timba has played a part in, in uh, changing that mindset. And my feeling that right now is probably the right time to change it to the next, go to the next level where yes now you know, Singaporeans appreciate local bands playing covers. Now can they appreciate local bands playing originals? I think that's the next challenge. and. Uh, and it's always going to be tough for, for a local band because they're always going to be thought as inferior to a foreign band. So it's, it's just a question of commitment and working hard and believing in yourself and never giving up and really just, you know, even if people are sitting down and listening to you and not clapping, or it's just not giving up, just keep going. Keep proving to people that your music is just as good as anybody else. And I think one day people will start to listen. Okay, uh, it, uh, I, need emo, I need the album Emo Fascism for a few reasons. Uh, one is that um, 
my first album, which was uh, under the band name Watchmen, that was 20 years ago. Uh, the album title was actually Democracy. So I thought it'd just be a funny contrast to call have the word fascism in the album title. And one of my favorite uh, Elvis Costello albums is actually called Armed Forces. And that album, uh, original title was supposed to be called Emotional Fascism. So I kind of you know stole the title, but decided to update it because now people use the word emo more than anything else. So that's why I use emo fascism. And you know, the voice, the main thing to to try to get people's attention is to have some you know title that straight away people well, what what's this album about? So that's like a starting point. Like it's just like calling the first album democracy, and people straight away well, what's this a political album or what is it about? Is it political and things like that? So it's all these reasons, that's why I call the album no question.